and what we really do there is uh, is that we we, we have a layered approach and we separate the flight critical functionality from the mission related functions so that we do not have to recertify and requalify the whole software load uh, when we make a change to functionality needed on, on the technical side. And as far as we understand, nobody else uh, is doing this or has done this yet in terms of architecture. Uh, of the avionic system and we think this will be key for the future. The number of applications on board, they may be flight safety critical or not flight safety critical. Uh, we separate these applications from the hardware in a way so that we can interchange the hardware for practical obsolescence reasons over time because we all know that we need to change computer platform once in a while. Uh, that's just how technology works today. Uh, but we, we do not have to either uh, handle the hardware-related uh, parts when we do tweakings and changing in our software. To make an analogy, uh, we see that in the civil world uh, we've had different equipment for different functions. Uh, so it has been also uh, in the fighter segment. We've had systems for communication, like the mobile phone here on the picture. Uh, specific systems for uh, navigation, for sensors, as you see the camera on, on the on the upper left part. Uh, but nowadays we we all have one one type of device uh, with it all, and, and that is the mentality we have with Grip and Echo. Uh, we have one optimized computer platform, and then the applications uh, they reside on top of. It. And uh, it's uh, all about to be able to uh, cope and, and introduce capability over time as the threat situation is changing. Uh, and uh, traditional midlife upgrades we have since a long time avoided in and with the Gripen concept. Uh, we have rather worked with a continuous development cycle every three years. We have introduced one material system upgrade, we've called it. But with the new avionics system, uh, we can make these steps even smaller and we can do them more often. And now it is not that technology or um, uh, certification issues to redo the complete uh, loop of that uh, that is giving us uh, the constraints. It is more how quickly an operator can understand and define for himself what new functions are needed. The technology uh, can within days, weeks implement a new function. Then it may be a question how long it takes to develop that function, if it's extremely complex or, or, or if it's more smaller changes. Uh, but technology is providing us the possibility for very quick upgrades. So it's, it's not any longer the technology which is the, the limiting factor.